A book arrived for me in the post this week uh, by Mark Beaumont, who holds the world record for riding around the world in a staggering 78 days, and Laura Penhall, who led the first female crew to row the Pacific Ocean. It's called Endurance, it's published by Legends at GCN, and it's a book focused on endurance bike riding. They have a variety of definitions of what endurance cycling means, but what appealed to me is that it covered planning, logistics, charity and partnerships, support teams, and a whole host of other topics not usually covered by books like these, few as they are. In fact, the training section doesn't even start until chapter five. It's an excellent book and I've read it in three days. Indeed, Mark has posted the interviews of the contributors as podcasts. I'll put a link to that in the description, but essentially it means the book almost accompanies the podcast as a note supplement. I've learned loads already and I'll pick apart some of the amazing content as I revisit it and it guides me through my challenge next year. If you don't know what that challenge is because you're new to the channel, then take a few minutes to watch the video here first. So I've decided to use one of the concept Mark uses for his adventures and races, the concept of four pillars of planning in this week's video. I'll probably use this each week to break down where I'm at in a logical manner. They are athlete, logistics, affordability and media. So here we go. This week, I have been mostly eating, well, to be fair, mostly just eating. I haven't drunk any alcohol for two weeks now other than on my birthday, and actually that's quite a big deal for me. Uh, eating's been all right, I'd probably give myself two and a half out of five. Uh, it's been quite a tough week with Beck's final, and thank God, final chemo session on Tuesday. My eldest son's homeschooling at the minute due to COVID contact within his bubble, and the ongoing relentlessness of uni teaching. So it's the same old story of doing my stuff, doing Beck's stuff, looking after Beck's, making sure the kids and the dog are sorted out. Um, it's gonna take Beck's a while to recover from the endurance event that is chemo uh, and she also has radiotherapy coming up uh, but the end is in sight. The bike rides were scuppered this week due to having my power tap wheel serviced. It, I took my wheel to my mate Robin who basically taught me everything I know about bike repairs but I'm not very good at it so I take everything to him anyway and um, because he's amazing basically. He worked for Shimano in the track centre at 2012 Olympics uh, and he's an absolute proper legend. We're going to be doing some videos together very soon. Twenty minutes easy, but I did get out for my two runs at the start of the week uh, before the wheels literally came off, and I had to focus on the tasks that are in hand. So that's the athlete part of this week. Loads in regards to logistics this week for the Grand Tour. I've planned ten of the twenty-one stages now on Ride GPX routes. I've been saved to my Garmin. I've even started to recon some of the bits that I haven't ridden before. The plan is to drive all of the routes and ride as many as possible too. So far I've got the two TT stages for stages 5 and 20, along with stages 1 and 21 and a few in between. Most of the stages are coming in around 1,000 metres of climbing, whether they're 90 kilometre mountain stages or 120 kilometre hilly or flat stages. So my idea of what a mountain stage might comprise of might have to change, but we'll see how the Brecon stages shape up first. I'm sort of putting off stage 7 at the minute. It's going to be the longest Tour de France stage in 20 years, so that's going to be 154 kilometres me, just shy of 100 miles and that's only seven days into the challenge and only two days before the rest day um, so that's going to be quite a challenge for me but essentially it's been a really successful logistics week for me This is one that has to take a slight deviation from Beaumont's book, and it's a focus on charity stuff rather than my own affordability for the project. Although tyres, clothing, nutrition, etc., will all need to be accounted and budgeted for. The charity focus will tie in with logistics in the next section, which is media, but for now I've sat down and worked out some numbers. I want to raise £5,000 for a breast cancer charity, and the two main ways are going to have people to pay £50 to join me as a teammate for a stage. So 21 of those times £50 comes in at 1050 and then have some companies sponsor each stage at £200 per stage, plus the accompanying daily vlog that will go with it, that's £4,200 and added together you get £5,250. I'm going to have to account for a shortfall of maybe a teammate or a sponsor here and there not uh, taking part, so I'll also have a traditional um, sponsorship model which means that along with all those things the numbers should hopefully all stack up and look fairly solid. <music> 
You're watching some of this right now, it ties in with the charity bit of course. No company is going to sponsor a stage without any publicity and so the plan is to promote them with a daily vlog during the tour. There's no point in doing those if no one watches them so I need to build my YouTube presence. My aim is to hit the monetization target of 1000 subscribers ASAP, I currently have 768, and hit the yearly watch time hours of 4000, I'm currently on 2380. So the plan is to up the game here with more content and more quality. This week I've managed to get my vlog out, which not many people are that bothered with, but also the first in a series of short films about the cold water swimmers at Marine Lake, and also a life hacks video for middle-aged people. Uh, these two videos have seen a spike in subscribers and also in watch time, so I need to keep this up and make sure the content is being produced to make it viable for companies to sponsor. As Mark Beaumont says in his book, you have commercial sponsors who have a vested interest in cycling, who may be interested, but you also have uh, corporate sponsors who have no interest in cycling, but are interested in supporting charity and also promotion of their brand. These are the people that I need to have an appealing platform for, for them to put their money in their pocket. So with all that in mind, now is a good time for me to ask you that if you haven't subscribed already, uh, do so please and hit the notifications bell so you'll get to see all of these lovely videos and you'll also be contributing to raising money for the charity too. If you want to look back and watch some previous videos that I've made in the last 130 weeks straight, then it would also be a really huge help for me in getting the watch time up too. So thanks in advance for that. So that's what I've been up to this week and what I've been able to do around work and family stuff. I feel like I've made really good progress with the planning and that's a key component alongside the training that just wasn't feasible this week. Hopefully all things being well, that can change next week and let's hope so. See you then and have a good week and stay safe.